Today, I want to dive into building a day-night system in Unity that operates as a service and publishes events. And beyond that, I want to set up all the things you might expect from a system like this, blending skyboxes, rotating lights, and changing post-processing. By the end of the video, we should have a pretty full-featured system that we can drop into any project. Whether you're building a farming sim or a vampire hunter, many games need a night and day system to allow for the core mechanics. Let's get into it. I've created a scriptable object here to hold all of our general number settings so we can start the time at noon, but we'll have sunrise at 6 a.m. and sunset at 6 p.m. to start with. And then time multiplier will just be how fast we're actually going to speed this up compared to real time. Next, I'm going to set up a time service. This will do all the calculations related to date and time for us. We'll use a date time struct to represent the current time in the game world. And then we can have two time span structs that represent a duration equal to the sunrise hour and the sunset hour. If we bring in our scriptable object reference through the constructor of this class, then we can use these settings to actually set up these initial values for these different structs. First, let's store a reference to these settings. Then we can initialize the current time to today's date plus the actual time span that represents the starting hour. Similarly, we can set the sunrise time and the sunset time using the time span four hours method on those times from the settings that we passed in. Next, we'll need a method that will allow us to update the time as the game is playing. So we can have a public method that will accept delta time and we can just use delta time to constantly be incrementing our current time. Okay, let's add a little bit of logic to this. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to know quite often is, is it daytime or nighttime? So does the current time fall between sunrise and sunset? If that's true, then it is daytime. We're also going to want to be able to calculate the difference between two time spans so that we can tell how close we are to sunrise and sunset and whatnot for different effects in the game. Here we're saying that if the result is negative, meaning the from value is later than two, we're gonna add 24 hours to account for the time difference being the next day. For the most part, I want this service to publish events when significant things happen. And so in order to do that, I'm going to keep track of whether it's day or night in an observable. And I'm also going to keep track of the hour in an observable. Now, observable is a class that we built on this channel a few months ago. So I'll have a link to that up here on the screen and in the description. Basically, observable is a wrapper that publishes an event when the value of the thing being observed changes. So to make use of that, I can make three public events here. So we can publish an event on sunrise, one on sunset, and we can publish an event every time the hour ticks off. Now down in the constructor, we can set some initial values for these before we've even registered for any events. We already have a method for is daytime, so we can use that value. And then we can also grab the hour property from the current time struct. When the is daytime observable fires its event, we can make a decision based on its value, whether or not to fire the on sunrise or the on sunset event. And then we can do something a little bit less complex with the current hour, just whenever the value changes, let's just publish that event. If we come back down a little bit to where we're updating the time, here we can also set those values for the observables every time we're updating the time. We can make a choice, is it still daytime or not? And we can set the hour as well. The observable class will only fire its event when the value actually changes. Because we have all of our times, including the sunset and sunrise in here, it's not too hard to actually calculate a rotation for our directional light as well. Let's store the value of the is daytime calculation locally here. Our starting degree for the rotation could be zero for straight down or 180 for straight up in the middle of the night. Then we need to know if it's daytime to decide if we're starting from sunrise or sunset. And likewise, we need to do the same for the end time. Now we can calculate the difference between the start and the end. And we can also calculate the difference between the start and where we are now. That way we can calculate a percentage of how far the sun has actually traveled in this arc. Then we can just lerp a point between the start degree and the start degree plus 180 degrees based on that percentage value. So we'll be able to use this angle to rotate the directional light or anything else we want to rotate. I'm just going to add one more thing to this class, and that is to add a public property so that we can get the current time whenever we want. Okay, that's all of our logic handled. Let's move on to visuals. So I'm going to create a mono behavior called time manager, and that'll expose all of our serialized fields and public properties that we need. The first of which is going to be a text mesh pro text field, because I just want to test out this service and make sure that it's working before we go any further. The time manager, of course, is going to have a dependency on the time service. We can initialize that in the start method, but of course we're going to also need some time settings to pass into the service. So let's expose that as a serialized field as well. 
Now we can create a new time service just by passing in the time settings to the constructor. The time service will need to get delta time every update. So let's just make a method here. When we're updating the time of day, we can call the service and pass in delta time to it. At the same time as we're updating the service, we can also grab the current time to string, just show hours and minutes right in that text field that we're going to create. So of course, this private method isn't going to call itself. So let's call it every update. And that's it. We've got a pretty simple time service. Let's jump back into Unity and make sure it's working. I'm going to start by making a new instance of that scriptable object time settings. Now it already has good defaults for what I want anyways for now. Uh, and then we can go ahead and actually make a game object to be our time manager and add the time manager component to it. So I can drag in our time settings there, but I still haven't made a canvas. So I'm just going to right click and create a new text mesh pro object. That'll give us a canvas event system and everything. Rename this to time. Come back out here, get rid of these warnings on the canvas object. But then I'm going to go back over to the time object, change the text to just something default. We can choose a more exciting font. We can put it up in the top right corner. I'm going to move it in just a little bit from the edge and then let's write a line, no wrap. Yeah, that looks good. Okay. Now we just drag in the reference and click play. Okay. So it's clearly counting up. It rolled over to one there. That's good enough for me. Let's move on to actually affecting the game world. So I've got several effects in mind and I'm just going to add them one by one. Before I do anything, I'm going to add an Odin attribute here just so I can edit my time settings without actually having to go over to the scriptable object every time I want to affect a change. The first thing I want to do is start rotating the sun. So I'm going to keep a reference to both the sun and the moon directional lights. Now we can scroll down a bit and add a new private method for actually rotating the sun. Since our service is already calculating the angle for us at any given time of day, we can just hook right into that. Now we can rotate our sun around the x-axis, which is vector 3 right, by the rotation angle. Then let's come back up to the update method and make sure we call this private method every update. I'm also going to paste in just a couple key codes so I can speed up or slow down the time just as I'm experimenting with things. So back here in Unity, I actually have my sun's rotation at zero right now, which is off into the horizon. So if I was to turn it to 90, that would be full on daylight. So that's pretty high intensity. You might need to tweak that in a little bit. So I'll just pull in the references here to the sun and the moon, then hit play and make sure it's spinning around. Okay. Yeah. Slowly moving slowly. I think maybe I will hit the space bar and just speed it up a little bit here. Okay, there we go. So we got some shadows stretching out and we're into nighttime. There's still quite a bit of ambient light, so we can fix that in a minute. And then here we go. Sun up again, coming into midday and stretching out. I've got it running really fast now. Okay, so that's probably the biggest indicator in our game that time is actually going by. But how can we make this even better? Let's add something else. So back here in code, we can start working on the intensity of the light. So we could have a curve that determines how much or how fast we're moving from daylight into nighttime and the other way around. Then we're going to lerp these values. So let's have a maximum for each. I think the darkness should probably be about half of what the daytime is, I think. Then we can come down right above our rotate sun. Let's have another method here. We can call it update light settings. Let's start by getting the dot product of the direction the sun is pointing and vector 3 down. We can use this value to lerp the intensity of our sun from 0 to the max. And we'll do it based on that curve. So we'll set a curve in the inspector and we'll ramp the sun's intensity up as soon as we need to. We can do the same operation for the moon as well. I also want to change the colors a little bit during daytime and nighttime. So if I come back up to the top here, I'm going to add two more fields for colors. So we can have a color for the day ambient light and a color for the night ambient light. This is a URP project, so I'm going to be changing these on the volume. So let's have a reference for that as well. One of the URP post-processing effects is color adjustments. We can easily get a reference to that by calling the volume.profile try get method. Now let's put this to work in our update light settings method. So we're already using the curve. We could do that again. But first of all, let's just say if we couldn't find color adjustments because they're not set up on the profile, bail out. Otherwise, let's use our light intensity curve again to lerp the color value. I think we can optimize this too by storing the evaluate result in a variable. We can take care of that a little later. For now, let's make sure that we call this new method from our update method. 
and let's go back and try it out. So there's a few new settings to work with here. First of all, I'm going to make a curve. I want to ramp the change up fairly quickly here. So I'm going to right click and add a key and then I'll make it shoot up towards one fairly quick and then stay there for most of the day or the night as, as it may be. Now we can choose a few colors for ambient daylight and ambient nightlight. I don't want to go too dark or it's going to be like pitch black. I've already created a post-process volume here. It has most of the basic stuff that you can imagine, but I've also added an override for color adjustments. Now my time manager actually expects a reference to this post-processing volume, so I'm going to drag it in there and we're good. Actually, one more tweak. I'm going to make this daylight ambient color just a little bit more yellow, maybe, I think. Let's try that. All right, click and play. Okay, well, it looks a little dim. I think that max sun intensity of one is not going to cut it. I'm going to speed up the time a little bit just so we can see it a little bit faster too. So I'll change the sun intensity to three. And I think this nighttime intensity could be higher too. Maybe one, maybe even higher, maybe one and a half. Okay, that, that seems okay. Let's get the sun coming up here again. Just see how it looks with a three. Oh yeah. Okay, this, this looks pretty good. And we're off. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that looks all right. Okay. Well, let's move on to the, the next step. So the next thing I want to do is change the sky box at night. So to do that, I've written a very, very simple shader and I'll include it with the code, but I'm not going to recreate it here. All it's doing is taking two textures and blending them together based on a blend value. I'll include this shader with the other source code from this video, but let's go see how it works. So I put the shader over here in the shaders folder, and I've also created a material already using the shader. So I just called it day night skybox. Now I already have two textures that I'm using. They're 360 skyboxes. And I put the daytime in the first one, the nighttime in the second. And I've also set this as my skybox material and set the sun as my light source in the lightings tab. But if we come back to the inspector here and I start pulling on the blend, you'll see what happens. It's going to change that skybox based on the blend value. So we can set this value in code using our time manager. So let's create a new private method here to update the sky blend. Let's figure out the dot product of how the sun against vector three up. That'll tell us how far across the sky the sun has actually traveled. Then we can calculate this blend value again using our intensity curve. And we're going to lerp a value from zero to one. Then we can set the float value of that blend field in the skybox shader on the skybox material. So let's come back up to the top and add a field for the skybox material. And then, of course, we need to call this method in our update method. So I'll just come down here, add that one line. Yeah, then we can go try it out. So not too much to do here. Just drag in the reference to our material and press play. And here we go. Let's see the change. Yeah, happens pretty rapidly. It's going along the same pace as that intensity curve. And we're back into daylight. Of course, I've got it ramped up here to an 8000 multiplier too. So it's going pretty quick, but it looks good. It's working. I might just tweak some of these settings just a little bit and turn this curve down just a small amount. So it's not quite as intense. I think that looks all right. Let's bend it down a bit. Yeah, maybe I'll change this light too. I don't know if I was so happy with that yellow. All right, so one more thing to do. I really wanted to implement some kind of retrograde time dial up in the top corner. First, I'm going to move this text down out of the way. I'll move it down to about 250, so it's closer to the middle of the screen. And then we can add a new UI image here. And the image is going to act just as a mask for a bigger image underneath. So we can add the image here. And let's see, I'm just going to call it mask, but I'm also going to add the mask component to it. Uh, you don't have to do anything other than that, really, except you have to come up with some sort of mask to use. Now I've got this PNG, which is just a black circle that's going to act as the mask and the rest of the image is transparent. So I'm going to put it up in the top corner and kind of put it... Well, actually, let's take a look at the game view quickly. So it's pretty tight up in the corner. We can move it down and in, and it could certainly be bigger. So maybe I'll double the size here to, say, 200, and then we can move it in minus 50, minus 50. Okay, that looks like it'll do the job. Let's come back to the mask. We are going to add a child to this, except it doesn't need to be in regular image. It can be a raw image. 
So I've got this little retrograde image that you might have seen something like this in an old uh, pocket watch or something. But I'm going to blow it up nice and big, quite a lot bigger than the mask. And then I need to yank it over because we just want it to rotate, but I only want to see a little part of it all the time. So that's probably good. It might need a little bit of tweaking, but I'll just set it right here evenly at 150. And yeah, I think that should do the job. Now I have one more image to add, which is just a normal image and it's just a small border around it. Uh, these images I'm using, I just made in Photoshop really quick. They're not really production grade, but they certainly will do for prototyping. So this looks okay, I think, um, but we need to hook it up with code and make it actually spin around. So if we come back into code here, let's start by creating some fields. So we have a reference to the rec transform of the dial. And I also want to know what the initial dial rotation was because I don't think it's uh, going to align up quite the way I want right from the start. So right in the start method, let's capture the Euler angles of the Z and we'll just store that and we can add it as we're moving things around. So down, if I come all the way down to where we're rotating the sun, I'm just going to add one more line and we're going to rotate the dial with that same rotation angle plus the initial dial rotation, whatever it is we set in the inspector. So back in the editor, let's check out the actual angle here and see what happens when I rotate, see if I can figure out what a good starting position would be for this thing. Because we're starting the game at noon. So we can try this 90 degrees. Let's also give these uh, game objects some better names. Let's call the raw image, let's call this dial. And the other one we can just rename to be border maybe. Yeah. And then of course our time manager is going to need a reference to the rec transform of the dial so that it can spin it around. That's it, let's try it out. Okay, well, maybe I should slow it down a little bit here. It's definitely starting off at probably the opposite of what I want. So let's flip it to minus 90. I think that will make more sense because we should be starting in the daytime and then moving to the night side. Okay, here we go. So we got daytime, daytime, there's sunset and we've got night. And here we go, sunrise again. All right, well, that's certainly the effect that I wanted, but I do think I'm gonna have to hire some kind of artist to make a better dial for me. Okay, well, overall, this is certainly what I was going for. So I'm happy with that. The only other thing that I'd like to make sure is working in here is make this event driven so that other services in the game, like growing plants or running quests or whatever, can depend on it. The service is already publishing events, but we can't really access them from outside of the system. Let's add three public actions here that just reach right into the service and allow registration for these events. In a bigger game, I would have the service just published straight to the event bus. But for now, and especially for people who are new to the channel, we can do it this way and allow any other class to subscribe to these actions. So if we come down to the start method here, we can just add some debug statements that'll let us test this out. Let's hit play here and let's watch the magic happen in the console. <laughs> Apparently I've got it cranked up super fast again. Let's just slow it down a little bit. So we're getting a tick a message every hour change. And there went sunrise there. We'll hit sunset here in a moment. It should happen right at six. There it is. Yep. Okay, so that's perfect. So we can hook into this for, yeah, for just about anything. For growing plants, for quests, for anything that's time dependent, durability of items, anything. Well, that's all I've got for you today. Make sure you click the like button if you haven't yet already and uh, click the bell as well because we're going to be building more systems, talking about more architecture, solid principles, programming patterns, etc. on the channel. All of that coming up and if you can't wait till next week though, click on one of these boxes on your screen and I'll see you there.